increase your people, it's going to increase your income, it's going to increase your businesses, it's going to increase your anointing, it's going to increase your prayer, it's going to increase your worship, it's going to increase your authority. Hallelujah. You're going to take dominion in areas you haven't taken dominion before. You're going to get into places that God has not allowed you to go because you weren't ready. You were not mature enough to take it. But you've been through a lot. You've been through a fight and a difficulty. So God's got you ready for something new. Hallelujah. God always does the testing before He does the promotion. And so He tests you. He gives you a trial. He gives you a circumstance. And as you begin to come through as a winner, because He fights the battle for you, He then rewards you. Hallelujah. How many of us know that God rewards those who love you? The Bible says that we must believe that He is God. And that He's the rewarder of all those who seek Him. And so we've got to believe He's God and He's the rewarder. God is a rewarder right through Scripture. He's the God who's given rewards. He's the God who's given crowns. He's the God who's praising, who's uplifting, who's congratulating. He's, he's so proud. He's a proud Father. Hallelujah. That's why He's the good Father. Amen? Amen. So today I want to speak to you on the subject of ethics and morals. Amen. Uh, we touched it last week. We, we just steamed over it, but we want to get a little more into depth today. Now on Tuesday nights, you know, certainly our Tuesday nights will come to an end, but this Tuesday, come along, uh, we're dealing, I started off a, a series of three heavens and angels and demons. Amen. We're dealing with demonic activities that the church experiences. And I want to take you through how to cast them out, how to recognize them, um, what are the telltale signs of the demons, because scripturally God has given that to us, the Holy Spirit reveals uh, much more now that He lives in us, uh, God reveals deeper things. So I want to bring those truths to you, that as a church you may become more effective. Amen? Praise God. So let's start in the book of Psalms 100, I believe that's a good place to start. Psalms 100. It says here, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness, Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his posture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth for all generations. That is so true. It's such a clear message of who God is. So I want to just break this down for you very quickly before we get into ethics because it's important to know who God is. Amen. The Bible says that God is a, a God who enjoys worship. He enjoys singing. He enjoys dancing. In fact, heaven is a place where the Bible says there's going to be a, 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 a wedding feast. God is a God of feasts where he celebrates events. He's a, he's a God who enjoys having his people around him, his family, always in his house. You hear Jesus telling the stories of go out and invite everyone you can to come in. Bring them into the house that my house may be full. God, God the Father, his heart is a heart of love. We serve a God of love. Hallelujah. That the primary place of God is the point of love because God is love. Everything he does comes from love. 
Isn't that amazing that we can take that into heart today, that God is not making a decision out of anger. He's not making a decision out of wrath. He's making a decision out of love. Because the primary choice of everything for God is love. And so the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. God's desire is that we serve Him with gladness. No one should come and serve the Lord because you think it's so difficult to do. It must be a glad response of freedom. You must be free to serve Him. You must come on your own free will to say, Lord, I'm, I'm so excited to serve you because of who you are. Who is He? The Bible says, He has made us. He's our creator. He's our designer. He's our father. He's given us life. We did not make ourselves. You are not the owner of yourself. You didn't make yourself. No one here is self-made. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've never experienced that. When you visit somebody and say, just hang on. I'm just busy making myself. It doesn't work that way. God has made you. Just let that settle in. He is our maker. He's made us. And then he says, after he's made us, we are not our own. We are his. We are the sheep of his pasture. And I love that. Because he owns the pasture. And he owns the sheep. My goodness, everything you have, he owns. There's nothing you can say that is yours. Because the Bible says, everything we have, we have received. It's been going somewhere yet. Oh my goodness. You know, when you were born, you didn't come out with a jacket and a pocket full of stuff. Hallelujah. You came out butt naked. You got nothing. Everything you received on this earth came from God. Amen. That's why Job said, naked I came in, naked I will leave. I came with nothing, I leave with nothing. So everything you have, it's by God's grace that you have it. Don't ever sit back and say, I've done it, you've done nothing. He owns the pastures. He owns it. It's His grace. That's why when, you, when I say that this next year is going to be a blessing, it's because His grace is increasing. He's rewarding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a whole new You know what like Paul says? I become better, faster, and work harder as His grace increases in me. So it means as His grace increases, you become more effective. Hallelujah. As His grace increases before you manage the hundred grand. But as His grace increases, you then manage a thousand rand. As His grace increases, it becomes a million rand. And before long, it becomes a billion rand. It is God's grace. Enter His gates with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. And His courts with praise. The, the Bible gives us the reasons, firstly, we should come before God is to thank Him. But the protocol of heaven is to enter with thanksgiving and with praise. You don't just come into God's house anyhow. You don't just come and sit down and say, well, I came. You come humbly before Him. Because you know you are His. And a word, He can stop your heart. And the word. He actually said, you fool. Don't you know today, your soul is desired of you. The man who put away all his wealth and said, now I'll live big. He died that same night. God is the one who's in control. Not us. The Bible says you, can't, you cannot even control your life. You don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. You have no idea what's happening in the next minute. God is in control. Let that saturate you today. God is in control. God is in control. That's why it's so important for you to acknowledge Him. 
Hallelujah. Then it goes on. For the Lord is good. Hallelujah. He's a good God. And His mercy is everlasting and His truth endureth to all generations. I'm here to declare to you today that God's truth is going nowhere. Hallelujah. You may have the world trying to change stuff around, trying to bring in new laws and change this and that, but God's truth is solid. It will not move. It's absolute. Hallelujah. The truth of God is absolute. And it will pass this generation and go to the next generation and the following generation until Jesus Christ returns. Because His truth will march on. From generation to generation. He's a good 